Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, this, my dear friends and fellow travelers. Welcome to Albion Bible Church here online. It's so good to be with you once again. And uh, we offer our prayer list, as always, to you. If you if you need prayer or praise, anything, just uh, c contact us through the description box below to our email address, and uh, we'll add you to our list. And uh, we, will, we will certainly pray for you, um, as, uh, as, we, as we should as we all should pray for one another, especially in these times that we live in. Um, so now we're moving into our second week of Advent, <clears throat> and and uh, we're going to continue our journey along, uh, you know, with, uh, with the theme of seeking the Lord. And uh, one of the, the very, the, one of the big moments uh, for seeking the Lord is when he appears again through his second Advent. The first Advent that we uh, we we practice now that we uh, they, we observe now is remembering his his first coming that was promised long ago, and well within the, in the Old Testament it was promised many times, but even as we we celebrate that the, the, that promise of he our Messiah Jesus our Messiah that he did come, we also look forward to the time when he will come again. And he, when, but when he returns this time, it's going to be very different uh, than his first coming. So uh, join with me, uh, if you will, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. Okay. And we're going to look at verses uh, 36 through 44. Okay. And as always, I want to invite you to, uh, to pause the video if you need to, time to find it in your, in your text Bible or in your Bible app, however you engage with Scripture. And uh, just take time, uh, you know, pause the video, take time to find it. And once you find it, press play and we can read together. Okay. And uh, that, uh, so I invite you to do that. All right. With no further ado, uh, Matthew 24, starting with verse 36. <clears throat> and this is Jesus speaking here. Okay. And he says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the son, but the father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving away in marriage, until the day that Noah entered, uh, in, it entered uh, into the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, be on alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time the night the thief was coming, he would have been on alert and would have not allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. May Almighty God bless this, the reading of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your word. We thank you for your providence, for all the things that you have given to us. Lord, especially this, this blessed word, this love letter, dear Lord, that you have given to us. Uh, to we, your beloved children, so that we may know your mind and heart and, and not only know it, but be transformed to become more and more like you. May this word transform us and change us down to our very DNA into the people you want us to be so that we are well equipped, you know, by, through word and deed to preach the, your, the goodness of your gospel, dear Lord, your death and your glorious resurrection and your glorious return one day. So, uh, so, Lord, we ask that you bless us, dear Lord, so we may bless others through the spreading of this word. In your blessed name we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Um, it seems like every year there is somebody who is trying to speculate the sec of, of when exactly the second coming of Jesus is going to be. And when that's when that is going to happen um there's there's no shortage of videos on youtube uh, there's no shortage of 
uh, declarations made by people and, and, you know, through various publications or various public statements. And uh, so it's, and it can be, it can cause a, a, a lot of people to become jaded to the idea of, of Jesus' second coming because so many predictions are made. And of course, they obviously never come true. And so it, it becomes difficult in a lot of ways to talk about his second coming without somebody uh you know who is who has heard one too many false s- s- stories and false claims and false predictions to say well you know you know that, that, that it's it's easy to just kind of just brush it aside and just just deny the whole thing but in spite of all of that We cannot get past the fact that Jesus talked about his second coming more than anything else that he talked about. If we, if we, uh, if we look at the, the Olivet Discourse, which is found in the book of Matthew here, and we just read a part of it, um, it's all concerning his second coming. All of it is. And, uh, we, we talk about the, uh, the idea of parousia. And this is what Jesus is, is says in, in the Greek, the Greek word parousia, and it is it means it it means um, coming, presence, um, you know, the arrival, advent, if you will, you know. So I, I believe this is this is very appropriate to be talking about this at this time of year, very appropriate, and it, I believe it is part of Advent observance. Yes, we remember his birth as a baby born as one of us and uh and we'll, we'll talk as advent goes on we'll talk more about that the, the 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 particulars of him his his first coming but we can't talk w- about his first coming without also talking about his second coming okay it's not it's not just to remember advent's not just to remember that he came but it's a reminder to us that he is coming again and, and he talks so much about it. Jesus talks so much about his second coming. We can't ignore it. Despite all the, the false prophecies that have, been, that have been uttered out there throughout the years, we, we, we can't lose sight of the fact that he is coming back. Now, Jesus did not tell us this so that we would resort to countless pointless attempts to predict when that will be okay he didn't that's not the purpose of him telling us about his second coming okay we 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 should not we should not descend and be be consumed with trying to predict when he will return and this this has been done so much i mean it's it's very old idea uh the very the, the you know many of you know that and most of you should know the name sir isaac newton we know sir isaac newton he's a you know the father of calculus you know the talked about gravity theory theory of thermodynamics uh, he, he he a brilliant brilliant scientist and much of our modern science is built upon what isaac newton himself had discovered and through his experiments and through his observations brilliant man but what a lot of people don't know what a lot of people don't know is that Sir Isaac Newton was obsessed with the idea of the second coming of Jesus. Obsessed. He had written even a book concerning it. The, I don't know if the book is even available out there, but he did write a book uh, d- discussing and trying to, where he was trying to figure out mathematically, trying to mathematically plot at when Jesus would return, it wasn't. It wasn't some kind of esoteric uh, 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 prediction he was making. He was trying to do it through using science, mathematics, trying to 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 plot out when Jesus would come back. So he he was obsessed with that. He really was. He agonized over the second coming of Jesus. Um, there was a group called the Millerites. I believe they operated in between the 1920s, 1940s. They were a, they were a, a religious sect, and they too were obsessed with uh, with the return of Jesus. And they they made successive predictions about when they uh, when Jesus was coming back. And they they were so convinced that uh, each one of these 
at the when as the arrival as the date arrived you know where where they where, where, according to their predictions they would sell everything and they would go sit upon a hill and wait because they knew the lord was coming and when he wouldn't show up they thought well maybe we got the date wrong so then they tried this several times before they finally gave up on the idea of trying to predict the uh, the uh, second coming of jesus but a human ha you know and, and a lot of people today um especially with the things that are going on in the world right now it's not hard to look and 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 wonder if his second coming is not drawing near uh but the thing to remember is that human history is full is full of tragedy always has been uh, and it will continue to be so until jesus returns you know we we know by observing the world it is not getting better in in, in at least in this especially in the sense of of you know people's moral position or the way they treat other people uh you know we live at a time of plenty like has never existed before more and more people are 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 are, are being removed from poverty than has ever happened in, in any point of history and yet there is so much unrest there is so much unhappiness there is such just complete complete ig ig ignoring of any kind of idea of biblical morality and biblical uh, biblical righteousness and holiness and living, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's it's quite remarkable and breathtaking in some ways in its scope because it involves most of the Western world is just caught up like this. You know, even through all this plenty, there's still so much. There's so much debauchery and sin and and dissatisfaction unrest but we we uh we don't want to resort because of we see these things and because we see these wars popping up and r rumors of more wars popping up it's it's easy to get sucked into this idea what, what i like to call newspaper eschatology and what I mean by that is trying to predict the second coming of Jesus just by by reading what's in the news, and tr and making predictions or prognostications or or speculations about his second coming just by what's what's in the headlines, uh, and we shouldn't do that. You know, there's 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 so like I said, there's so much of this videos, media online, conferences print material and the, it goes on and on okay but we must 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 remember that jesus makes it very clear because i think he was trying to right from the start trying to nip any any speculation in the bud he was trying to do it from the very from the very first verse we read today he he, he made it very clear no one knows when he will come back except the father okay only the Father decides, yes, this is the time. Um, if someone gives a date, if someone tries to tell you and tries to convince you, oh, well, it's going to happen this time or in this particular month or later this year or next year or in the next couple of years, run the other way. Don't even give them a thought. Don't even, even give them a thought. Because even Jesus at the time while he was here on earth was not privy to his return. Now, I think that was part of the whole idea of him emptying himself, you know, in, in his human form, in, in, his, in, his, in his humanity. I, I, I believe that that was, that was part of that, that emptying himself, that, that he, he removed certain, he laid aside certain aspects of, of himself in order to, to, to be one of us. Um, and uh, it, you know, because Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, they're all one. You know, they're they're not three separate gods. They're they're one God, three divine persons, but they're one God. And uh, so, you know, you might say, well, how could Jesus not know if He's the Father as well as the the Son and the well as the Holy Spirit? I I. I I don't know how that works, how the Trinity works, how the how the Godhead works like that. There's a lot of things that make me scratch my head. 
but Jesus makes it pretty clear that it's it's only the Father who decides. So there, you know, at, le- at least as it seems to me, and I may I may be uh, maybe ignorant on some things here, but as it seems, what it seems to me is in Jesus, in is when he was here on earth, there were certain things that he just was because of his him emptying himself of of a lot of his glory. He he laid aside a lot of those 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 things he was you know otherwise privileged to. Um, so, so if, if even Jesus, when he dwelled on this earth, you know, did not know, then it's, it stands to reason that there, there's any lesser, any other mere human, mere mortal cannot and will not know at the date and time. There's just, there's just no way. What Jesus does make pretty clear is that it's going to be sudden and it's going to be unexpected. Okay. Sudden and and unexpected people will be going about their daily lives that's what he meant when he compared his second coming to the days of noah when he said people were marrying and giving in marriage and eating and drinking which meant that people were just going about their daily lives without any thought you know i mean there may have been warning signs clearly there were warning signs in the heavens and you know rain started and you know and uh, you know there's no crazy noah over there building this gigantic ship you know, but uh, people didn't give much thought to it until the floodwaters were actually upon them. Then they realized. But that's what Jesus was saying. He, he was he was just saying merely that people were just going along with their daily lives, just as in a day of, and, and that's the way it will be when he comes. People will be in the middle of whatever they're doing in their daily lives. They're just going to work, driving in their car. Uh, you know, playing with the kids or the grandkids, you know, do, doing doing all the many different things that people just do with normal life. And it's in the midst of all of that, that's when Jesus returns. So, and, uh, and it will happen to people who are both willingly and those who are unwillingly ignorant. Those who, who who have no idea that this is going to happen, and those who may have heard that it was going to happen, but because they have been jaded by so many of these false claims, they they do, they ignore the whole idea. But in fact, as as one biblical scholar has noted, in fact, since since the time of this event cannot be known in advance, it will catch many by surprise. And they will consequently not be ready. Okay. But the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man when it occurs, will be so startlingly, startle, startlingly, uh, and, and so conspicuous, it's so glorious, so great, that it will need no proclaimers and no interpretation. Everybody will know what something, they will know that something is going on, and they will know that it is Christ returning. The eminence of the coming day can indeed be counted on, even if the when is not known. Okay, we can be sure that it is coming. Okay, so, you know, okay, we, we know Jesus is coming again. So what? What does that mean? And, it, and it's clearly, if it's going to happen, you know, suddenly and uh, unexpectedly, so so what? Why, why should I even care about it? Why should I even think about it? What? Well, we believers, we know that the perusia will happen one day, that Jesus, his return will happen one day. But if the time of occurrence is not known, what are we to do with this information? This is what Jesus talks about, be ready. Okay. And he compares it to a man being ready for a, th- a thief breaking into his home. And, and if the guy knew when the thief was coming exactly, then he could be, he could be ready for him. But see, we... But the idea is, you don't know. We don't know when he's coming. So, to be to be ready, to be ready. You know. Uh, so, uh, so what 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 I extrapolate from this, because Jesus is talking about being ready at any time. These verses are really not about the future. They're about the present, right now. Instead of asking how soon, perhaps the better question is, 
am I living rightly? Am I living godly? If I'm, am I lead, if I, am I living with him leading my life, with him having, with, with Jesus having complete influence over my life? That's the question, you know, am I living it right? And you know, that reminds me of a, of a, a, a popular song a number of years ago by John Mayer, and it was called Why Georgia? And uh, I liked the song, and it, it, it was a real popular song when it came out. And uh, he had, and, and the, the whole punchline of the song is it, he, it's reflected in the in the chorus is is am I living it right? Am I living it right? Why Georgia? Why? You know he's he's at, he's ref, he's a a man reflecting upon his life, and reflecting upon am I really living this life properly? Am I really doing the things that I I should be doing? What you know, and and that is that is especially in this season of Advent. When this is the time for self-examination, for looking upon, uh, looking at oneself, one, what are your own heart and mind, and observing, is there sin in my life? Am I truly living right for Jesus, or is there something, is, is there something getting in the way? Is there sin getting in the way? And uh, have, have that, what have I allowed into my heart that shouldn't be there? You know. So, am, am I living a life that reflects Christ? Am I living it right? Am I concerned with those less fortunate than me and actively doing things to alleviate their suffering? Am I living a life that is holy, rejecting sin? If I am saved by the grace of Jesus from my sins, does my life reflect that? Does my life produce spiritual fruit that others can see? Okay, this is this is all encompassed in what Jesus means to, you know, to be ready. Are you ready? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The nine fruits of the Spirit that Paul talks about in the, in the book of Galatians. This, these are hallmarks of one who is ready. One who is following Jesus. So it's, it's not about looking forward to a future event. Yeah, he's talking about his second coming, but really the focus is on now. The focus is on how you and I are living according to Christ or not. Because okay. that's, that's what the real focus here is. Jesus is saying, be ready, for you do not know when your, the Lord, when, when your Lord will come back, when the Son of Man will come. So it's about what you do now determines you know where where are you where he may find you when he comes back see these these things are at the core of what Jesus means to be ready you know being ready it 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 does not and being ready does not involve speculation of when you know of, of getting the sequence of times and dates right it nothing about that that is not the purpose of Jesus words in this context you know, those engaged in speculation about the when may be some of the ones caught off guard completely because it may not happen the way they think. They're expecting this at this time and this date and, 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 and done in this way and this sequence of, sequence of events at this particular time. And it may not turn like out like that at all. And most likely it's, it's not going to. Jesus seems to make it very clear that it's going to happen when nobody's expecting it. Nobody's expecting it. And it's going to be sudden. The real core of the message isn't looking forward to a future event that we have no way of knowing when it, when it will come. We, we know he's coming. Please hear me. We know he's coming again. Jesus will come again. And it may be soon. We don't know. But the message is about living right here and right now for the kingdom, doing the good work he has called us to do, knowing one day he will come again in glory and majesty. Be about his work, spreading the good news of his gospel, his death and his resurrection, his coming again, and, and uh, both in word and in deed, that our words and deeds match up with each other. Okay, Using the gifts and talents he has given us 
for the furtherance of his will and his kingdom, using those wonderful talents that you have. You know, end, the study of end times you know, was never presented for the sake of mere information. Never for that. But always and consistently as the motivation for ethical living. It's about now. It's about living now in this moment. You know, there's a stress, the need to be prepared for that coming reality. Absolutely. But how do we do We do that in the present. We do that now. Like we talked about last week, while today is yet called today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart, but cry out to him for his salvation, for his forgiveness. I want to leave you with this story here. Uh, a Louisiana game warden had been tracking uh, Bordeaux. He was the famous Cajun poacher. Okay, And late one night, he stumbled upon the criminal's cabin. Climbing up on the roof, the game warden waited for the dawn, hoping to jump the poacher as he emerged. The game warden, after a fitful night trying to keep quiet, heard Bordeaux making breakfast the next morning. The smell of bacon frying and coffee brewing uh, became quite a temptation to the game warden's stomach. Then, to his surprise, Bordeaux came to the door and yelled, Hey, game warden, you might as well come on down and have some breakfast with me. Over breakfast, the game warden asked how the wily Cajun known he was waiting on the roof. Bordeaux grinned. I didn't, but I do that every morning just in case you were. We also should be daily looking for Christ's return. And we do that not through speculation, not through pointless uh, uh, prognostication, not through pointless guessing or trying to figure out but by daily living as Christ would have us live, according to his word, according to his good gospel. In that, we will be ready. And so we can say with confidence, as the early church said so long ago, come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, for your, uh, for, for, for your guidance, dear Lord, for giving us the word so that, so that we're, we're not caught off guard and we're, we're not left to speculate about anything, but we know exactly what you expect of us, Lord. And we know we, we, we should not get sucked into the, the, the pointless speculation about when your return is coming, whether it's soon or whether it's still a ways away. We know, dear Lord, each day that goes by, it's getting closer, uh, regardless of when you come back. But the, the, but the point really is, is that, Lord, that we are found faithful, dear Lord, and let us be found faithful. Lord, help us, dear Lord. We, we confess our sins to you. We look upon our hearts within ourselves, and we recognize the sin within us, and we come to you in repentance and asking of forgiveness, Lord, so that you will be gracious and you will be gracious to wash away those sins and to embrace us and draw us into yourself so that, Lord, we may be able to be about your good work of spreading the good news of your gospel. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, in this second week of Advent, as we remember your, your first coming and we look ahead to your second coming, let us be found now, in this moment, in this very moment, faithfully serving you. We thank you, Jesus. In your blessed name we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank you once again for joining us, my dear friends. Uh, if, you, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, it, it, it really helps to get the message out there. So if, if, you, if you find this useful and you, think you, you want to share this with others who do not, especially those who do not know Christ yet, you know, and invite them and and uh, and share this video with them, if you will, and uh, we greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. And also, I'm going to refer to you as always to the description box below for this week's featured video from one of the many wonderful, talented people here on YouTube, and uh, we we pray that it blesses you throughout this week. So, my dear friends, may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with your spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.